All over the media are story after story of abusers attacking women. And most of the time, these are women that they're in a relationship with, women that they claim to love. Some of the cases are very high profile, men that you would think would be beyond that because they have money, they have power, they have influence, and they have fame. But then none of that really matters. What I'm going to be going over with you are the basic, well, five of what I see as basic MO of a potential abuser. A lot of you don't understand what you're seeing when you're seeing it. And so you get yourself involved with a guy who's, his, whose sole goal is to dominate and control you. And they will do that by any means necessary. So over the next seven minutes, I'm going to be giving you five tips to look out for to know if the guy that you are calling yourself dating or in love with or even married to is a potential abuser, in which case you should get as far away from him as you possibly can. This is Deb Cooper, 7-Minute Lessons on Life and Love, coming right up. Abusive man's idea of love is stifling because he puts you on pins and needles and you never know what kind of mood he's going to be in from moment to moment. Ladies, this kind of love chokes the life out of you. Once a woman has been abused, she loses most of her self-respect and she begins to feel smaller and less herself as she bends and flexes trying to appease his never-ending never demands. And of course, there's dozens and dozens of signs that somebody's an abusive person, but I'm going to share with you some the five that I think are some that are very common that you can really watch out for. So let's go. Number one is what I call the setup. You like the guy, right? So you want to see him happy and you say, okay, unless you all agreeable. Sometimes, you know, you don't even really want to, but you do it. And I'm telling you, that's something that you need to stop doing it. You're doing it because you want people to like you, but you need to be your authentic self. This, uh, this it sets the abuser up to think that he can get his way and that and you're like going along with it. And he's you're manipulating him into believing that you're so compliant and he's manipulating you into being compliant. It's a mutual thing. And you can change your hairstyle. You can change your clothing. Some of you want to be home and you call him every time, certain times of the day. You make plans with your, you break plans rather with your friends because he wants you to. You change your nail polish. You change everything about yourself to please him. And it doesn't seem like a big deal. You keep saying that, but it is a big deal because those things make you you. So these guys will say and they'll do things that are disrespectful. They'll start to stand you up and tell lies to you. They'll intentionally start arguments to make you angry. And then he'll sit back and he'll look at you with this smirk on his face. Like and he's so proud of himself because of what he just did. You need to get around this by saying no to him. And you need to say it a lot. Even when you want to say yes, say no sometimes. You have to put your foot down and refuse to be his little puppet on a string. You never want to lose yourself in a relationship or give yourself away and your power away to a man just to keep him around. Ultimately, he's not going to respect you, and then he's going to really start with the abuse. Let's go to move on to number two, what I call the hook. This is the hook. Like, if you're fishing, you know what that's all about. This is when he calls and texts you half to death. He's real smooth. He's full of flattery, and all his intention that he pays you is just kind of overwhelming. You think it's romantic and that he wants to be in touch with you so much, and he really loves you. He really likes you. He wants to keep you safe. He wants to know where you are so he can protect you. In reality, he's calling and texting solely because he wants to know who you with, and this is where he keeps tabs on you. Why? Because he's insecure, he's jealous, he's possessive, and this is just one of his little tricks to keep you under his thumb. For example, he may keep you on the phone real late, say on a Thursday night, so that you go to work tired on Friday, too tired to go out with the girls on Friday night happy hour, so you come right home. 
Well, that was what he wanted you to do. But he manipulated you into doing it instead of outright telling you to do it. And they also want to be able to log into your accounts and get into your phone, you know, for you to share all your passwords. They want to know who's calling you. They want to know your whereabouts every second and who you have contact with. And it's essentially putting you in a choke chain like you're a dog. Number three, the shell starts to crack. This little perfection shell he's done put up around himself. Most of you still clues about what's going on, so he ups the ante. He lets it be known that he believes in rigid roles for men and women, and you must submit, and you can't do anything outside of his perception of what is proper womanhood because then, you know, it feels like it's, he says it's a reflection on him somehow. And his words you may find are degrading and they're critical, and they humiliate you and they poke holes in your behavior, your clothes, your hobbies, your interests, your friends, your job, your education, your dreams. Everything about you, he starts to attack it. He's going to make these snide, snide, little remarks and use sarcasm and all this snark, complain, com, you know, claiming that what he was saying was just a joke when he sees that you get mad. Basically, what he's doing is testing his limits. He's testing the boundaries. He's trying to see how much influence and control that you will give him and how much you're going to listen to him and how much how important his words are to you, his approval. And if you start to listen to him and you let go of your dreams and your hobbies and your interests and you start to feel that your accomplishments didn't mean much because he said they didn't, then you write where he wants you. Let's move on to point number four. This is when the boat of love starts taking on water. And you feel like you can't say certain things then because he'll get mad or he'll start to he'll stop talking to you altogether. He'll disappear on you. You can't find him. He won't call you. You may notice that he drinks a lot more than you thought he did or he uses recreational uh, pharmaceuticals, shall we say, that change his personality. And most of the time, you just feel like you're walking on eggshells and jumping around like a kangaroo trying to please him. And... If anything's miserable in his, life, in his life, any problems he has, anything, somehow it's your fault. You made him angry. You made him set. You made him yell at you. Dinner was lousy because you got home five seconds late. And you made him drink too much because you got him upset. And that's why he crashed his car. Favorite phrases by potential abusers is you aren't submissive enough or you don't make me feel like a man. So those, watch for those sentences. Those two things are big red flags. They will make a lot of excuses for the way that they treat you. But in his mind, he's never going to be the one that's fault. It's all going to be blamed on you, women, his past, his mama, the woman that he that he saw on the bus. I mean, it doesn't matter. Somehow it's a woman's fault. And the final point. I guess this is going to be over seven minutes. The man behind the mask is revealed. So you finally get to see him, who he really is. And it's like, who is this dude? You know, I don't really know who he is after you just spent all this time with him. He is a master at disguise, which is most the story of most narcissists. And uh, you don't really get to see his true self. And you ask him questions, right? You ask him direct questions because you're trying to get to know who he is, what he thinks, what he believes in, what he feels. He never gives you a straight answer. And he uses all these like word salad words to give a response to your question. I've talked about this in other videos. And so once he's done talking, you don't really know what he said. You don't have any more information than you had before you started talking. So you don't know much about this guy, you know. And then he gives you excuses for what he does tell you if it's not not uh, why he can't give you any real intimacy because his bad childhood, his parents were, were addicts. Nobody liked him as a child. He didn't have no friends. He was in foster care. He was this. He was that. He don't really know what love is. A previous girlfriend cheated on her, and now he don't trust women. All this stuff, all these are weak excuses for him to not take charge and responsibility of his life and his interaction with you, and you all buy it. You don't give them these kind of this kind of excuse making power in your life. So these are just, you know, a few of the common, I think very easily recognized behavior patterns that you will see in a man that has an abusive personality that I picked out from my 20, almost 30 years as a dating advice columnist. So I want you to be warned. I want you to get out of the situation before he ups the ante to the point where he starts putting his hands on you. Get out while you are still in one piece. And if you see even one of these signs exhibited by somebody that you're dating, 
make your way out of your relationship. Understand that this is his mindset. There's nothing you can do to change him. You cannot love him enough to make him treat you well. Marrying him won't change him. Having his baby won't change him. Really, if anything, you'll get more abused because now they'll know you're vulnerable and you can't do nothing. So, ladies, you know, you got to really understand. It is truly, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, it is better to be single and work on yourself and be happy and, and get to the point where you want to be so you can make wholesome, healthy choices for yourself. Keep looking for Mr. Perfect. You don't have to look for Mr. Right Now. You don't have to settle for anybody who's going to be abusing you in any way, shape, or form just to say that you have a man. This is Deb Cooper from SurvivingDating.com. I'll see you guys soon. Please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and become a subscriber to this channel. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh,